So I always say to people um, that I'm coaching that you should be building up skills, tools, techniques, tactics. You need to get a, a, that as your mindset and you need to get growth. And so learn a new skill. Welcome to the Bulletproof Cash Flow Podcast. Let's get into the show. Hey everyone, this is Augustino. Perhaps you're working in corporate America right now and you're looking to make the leap into real estate entrepreneurship, or maybe you're just looking to climb the corporate ladder to boost your income and fund your escape from the nine to five. In either case, you would need to figure out what the next level looks like. Well, today's guest understands this concept. He is a business coach and consultant who combines his thirst for knowledge with a love for business and a fascination with technology to help people achieve their goals. He also works closely with clients to help get them promoted, get them pay raises, and even get them the recognition for the value that they add to these companies. He has many years of experience navigating the corporate world and helping professionals get to the top of their field. He is the host of The Absolute Business Mindset, a podcast focused on business and on personal development. With all that, I'd like to welcome my good friend, Mark Hayward, to the show. Hey, Mark, thanks for coming on, man. Hi, uh, it's great to be here. Thanks for inviting me. Yeah, it's going to be awesome. If you like what Mark has to say, you can reach him via his website at absolutebusinessmindset.com. And if you like our content, please don't forget to leave um, a comment and rate the show. It helps us out tremendously. Finally, if you text the word freedom to 202-410-4202, you'll get our free ebook, The Bulletproof Guide to Finding a Broker. Okay, Mark, give the listeners a little bit more background about, uh, about you and, and what you're doing. Yeah, so I've uh, been in the corporate world for 14 years um, over two different companies. Um, I sell, implement and do business as usual in software um, in, in the business. Um, yeah, it's uh, it's been an interesting journey through my corporate ladder. Um, it's It's been hard at times, but, you know, it's it's really getting the right mindset of being able to move up that that career path um through the career i've taken on certain side hustles so as you mentioned the podcast that i've got um also i've started coaching in the last um, 18 months and also um, if i'm not busy enough i've started a property business as well excellent excellent well, let's focus on mindset so when we're talking in the green room I know that you're spending some time right now building a portfolio of real estate up in your neck of the woods, uh, up in London. Uh, so maybe talk a little bit about that. You know, talk about why you're doing this, what mindset you had to get into to really grasp, grab a hold of this thing and really um, commit to doing it. I didn't have any background in in property before about a year ago, but I've scaled up to five properties, looking to increase that to eight to ten this year. Um, it was it was a new skill, it was a completely new skill, and actually it was really good because I, I actually quite one of my things that I say is that people should be learning new skills, if not one every year, at least maybe two every year, to build up that that knowledge and skill set that adds to your whether it's a career, whether it's a business, whether it's a side hustle. So for me, I needed I knew the area that I wanted to invest in. I I got one and it needed to be refurbed and so it was all for me initially for the first two properties was based around getting the power team around me getting a broker getting an accountant getting a um a solicitor and getting a, a builder which has taken a little bit longer so for me initially it was really get your power team around you learn the process so going through the actual process was really it was a real um You've got to see if you can do it, if you can handle all of the different pressures and all the demands on your time. And I'm actually one of the things that I'm quite good at is actually putting boxes of things. So if I'm going into my coaching zone, I'll put my coaching hat on and, and do that and get into the mindset quite quickly. If it's my property, I go into that mindset. So for me, it's all about putting the right hat on and being able to um, push and be persistent and deliver um, what what you need to do uh, to, to to build up a successful business, whether it's a side hustle, corporate or a business. So you committed to doing the side hustle thing. You committed to doing real estate specifically to, to yeah. really 
help free you from that nine to five. But, and then like you mentioned, you do coaching already. What is a typical thing that holds people up from taking that action? And what is like a solution that you can offer some of these people to actually take that leap? I mean, I'm on the other side of it right now, man. I'll tell you. And we talked about this in the in the in the green room. I've never woken up for any day of my life after leaving corporate America and said, "Oh my God, I'm so happy that I'm." <laughs> I wish I was working in corporate America. It's never happened. <laughs> but, but but what would you say? Uh, what what like what what prevents them? And when they finally do decide to make the leap, what what is that thing that made them really push over the edge and, and get it done or start moving? So I think it's fear in most cases. I think people are fearful of new things. One of the things that I've sort of prided myself on the last really seven, eight years is being able to be comfortable in being uncomfortable. And that's Mm -hmm. where growth really comes, is pushing yourself out of your comfort zone. And I think the vast majority, I can talk about the UK, the vast majority of people in the UK are comfortable in their surroundings and they don't want to push themselves that makes it easier for me and for you and for other people to actually push the boundaries um, and, and push outside your comfort zone because it means it's not so so saturated it's not it's not so busy so so I always say to people um, that I'm coaching that you should be building up skills tools techniques tactics you need to get a, a, that as your mindset and you need to get growth and so learn a new skill so so my podcast was I wanted to learn a new skill and and it started very humbly as a as a hobby and it's developed and grown momentum and I've got some great numbers on downloads I'm really proud of what I've done I've done 200 episodes um, and so I'm incredibly proud of that but all of it was pushing myself outside your comfort zone to get real growth excellent excellent so I think that's that's probably one of the most intoxicating things is the comfort zone, right? If you if you work your forty hours, which is the same thing over there, yep. right? It, yep. it all originated here in the states. You can you know you can blame Henry Ford for that. As far as I understand, it was uh, back then. Uh, it was uh, you're talking turn of the last century. Eight hours of work, eight hours of rest, eight hours w- with uh, with the family. That's that was the allocated amount of time right. that was dictated to the globe. And we still use that same model. And again, I'm not, you know, this is not a discussion to, of course, you know, rip on people that are working 40 hour jobs or anything else like that. But I think at the same time, too, many people want to experience that freedom to do what they want to do. And like you said, fear is the thing that holds many of these people back. So, what are some of the things that you've seen or been able to do to help people overcome that fear? Is it just knowledge acquisition? Is it just really holding them accountable to certain things that we're going to do? A mix of both? Was it something else? Like, what, what what did you do? How did how do you help these people? So I would say let's just let's just um, this this population in the UK and the US that want just work life balance and they want to spend a lot of time with their families. I will if people come to me and they want to be coached, I will not criticize them for that. Because if people are happy and comfortable and they really genuinely are, I think you can have great happiness there as well. But sure. as as you said, there is that section of the population who are comfortable but actually want more. And they mainly are the moaners, the people that complain about this, they complain about, oh, it's so hard to get into property. It's so hard to to get a side hustle. It's so hard to build a business. And, and they're the people that you really want to shake. You want to go, well, these things are possible. You have to skill acquisition. You have to be able to learn something new. And these some of these guys have never learned anything new, literally for 20 years, 30 years in some cases. And I would say when I when I when I coach people, I want to understand their values and their beliefs and what they what really drives them. And then we sort of work out whether that's actually a good fit for me the way I like to work. So accountability is 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 very important for me. If you say you're going to do something and this is one of my core beliefs, if you say you're going to do something, you have to do it. Yeah. I, I don't want excuses. I I we'll we'll talk about it but so for me to get the best out of my my coaches my clients is decide what they want to achieve 
and then your 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 role becomes a sort of an a, 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 a accountability partner. You're 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 following them through. You're tracking them through. You're making them accountable for 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 the things that they said they were going to do. And there's sometimes awkward conversations. Sometimes there's uh, it can get. I wouldn't say heated, but people get upset. But the thing is, you just need to bring them back to the core beliefs and values that they start with. And if they want to have a growth mindset, I'm very big on this this differentiation between a fixed mindset and a growth mindset. Mm, Carol Dweck, yes. Yeah, yes. And, and for me, if they want the growth mindset, you have to put work in. This is, it's not easy. It, 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 you're, you're eight hours, eight hours, eight hours. That gives you eight hours to spend time with the kids or time with your family. And that still probably gives you another six hours to be able to study or go on social media and create a business on social media or look at properties online, whatever it is that your thing is that you're trying to get into. You've still got plenty of time to spend doing those things. So people get obsessed by just sitting in front of watching Netflix. And again, if they're happy, go for it but if you're saying you want something more you might have to stop your your netflix subscription and put that money into could be investing you could put money into an investment pot and invest it in the stocks and shares and 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 that might be your thing so there are any number of ways of being able to increase your skill set learn new techniques learn new tactics to be able to be successful in that time outside of your job. I've I've demonstrated, I, I hold down a corporate job and I've got my podcast, I've got coaching, I've got property. I've even started, I've done the second podcast course I did on Saturday where I teach people how to, to run a podcast. There is plenty of time. That's not an excuse. And just I need to take that out of people's excuses when when I'm coaching people. And by the way, when I asked that previous question about the whole eight hour thing, yeah, I'm not berating anybody. Uh, my, no, that okay. whole that <laughs> that whole thing comes from the understanding that there's a high percentage. I think here in the states, like 71 percent of people don't really like their jobs. <laughs> a lot of them are, a lot of them are looking for an escape. I can believe that. I can yeah. believe there are a lot of people that are not happy with what they've got and they fall into something. And um, and that's for me. So one of the, 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 the main areas, one of the key areas in my, my coaching is hit the refresh button. And that's, do you want a different role if you're in a corporate or do you want a different job um, or career? And sometimes people need to hit that refresh button. It doesn't really matter how old you are. If you want to make change in your life, you have to put yourself out there, do your CV and get it out there or start a business or start a side hustle, start a hobby that, that can build into things. There's so many things that people don't think of. And that's what I try and do. I try to open people's minds of what is what the, their potential truly is. Well, part of it is, I think in, in any one of those cases, whether they want to improve their their work uh, they're, where they're sitting at work, so to speak, or even do their, do their own thing. I think the first thing that you said without saying it is decision. You got to decide that you actually want to see that change happen in your life, right? Without that, okay. that decision, you, you just live in the same day over and over and over again, you know? And, uh, and, and like you said, that might be fine. It might, you might be perfectly happy doing that. And, uh, but I, I would I would venture to guess that for most of um, most of the people, maybe even listening right now, it's that they're listening because they do want that freedom. They do want to make that escape. And podcasts are fantastic. Audio books as well are fantastic ways. Social media for influencers. There's a there is so much free or relatively cheap information out there. YouTube. You can you can learn a new skill in two hours on YouTube. And um, there is there is so many different opportunities for people. And, and I, I, I learn to love to my self-development and my self-learning through initially podcasts, actually listening to podcasts. And I found um, a small number of influencers that I really enjoyed listening to. And um, and they were to an extent an inspiration for me. I also had a, 
I, I, about six years ago, I got a mentor, which is who really, really helped me as well. So um, I sort of approached it in, in twofold. I would pay a bit of money to get that expertise, uh, but equally, my commute, my, when I was walking the dog, I was going just going out. I would have a podcast in or an audio book, uh, trying to build up that skill set and knowledge. I wasn't very good at uh, quite some time about personal finance, but spent some time uh, listening and understanding about personal finance and how to segregate your money and 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 not overspend and and those sorts of things. That was a skill I wasn't given as a as a child, or I didn't learn at school, or my parents. I had to learn that myself, and and so. Mm that for me was a massive thing to to get control of the finances and things like that so again just if people want to learn there is so many ways and the one thing i would say about influencers are you because the market is relatively i say saturated there is quite a few number of influencers out there choose one or two that you like that you resonate with and go deep on them go deep on their books their story, their podcasts, their audio books, whatever it is. Because what you end up finding, and I, I found this um, uh, when I was talking to someone, that they were listening to six or seven different influences. And one was saying, spend money on stocks and shares. One was saying, buy real estate. One was saying, oh, you should save if you need cash. And they got, uh, we call it um, analysis paralysis. They did so much analysis and they ended up doing nothing because they were being pulled in six or seven different directions. So find one or two that you like and go deep into their work. Absolutely. I mean, what you just pointed out is, is that there's no shortage of methods or information out there. It's the willingness to actually absorb the information. That's, that's, that's key. But then secondarily, it's, that's what, that's what happened to me. The focus, I actually, when I made the decision to quit technology altogether and go straight into real estate, I, I listened to two two authors, right? Robert Kiyosaki and yep. Sam Zell. And uh, Robert Kiyosaki for the tactical and Sam Zell for the strategic. I mean, I was even I even picked them for specific reasons, mm. right? And I, I wasn't listening to everybody under the sun. I picked two, absorbed as much as I could, and then I went to the next one. Yeah. But I mean, it took it took a great deal of time and commitment. Yeah, there was no Netflix or watching TV or going yeah. out to dinner and any of that stuff. It was all studying from the time I woke up to the time to to, to bedtime. And I mean, I know that most for most people, they, they either don't have the time to commit to that because they're they're they were you know, obviously working. Maybe they have other commitments. But how how did how did you make that? How did you make that leap? And and maybe maybe you can even refer to some of the other. Uh, without naming names, of course, and maybe some of the other people that you're working with, how do they make that leap? How do they, how do they make that that the decision to go ahead and focus on those one or two authors and 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 have the ability to absorb all that? So the bit that we haven't talked about, we can all listen to three, four podcasts a day, and you can absorb the knowledge. The critical point is you take the knowledge. Sometimes you need to make it work for yourself. You can have themes that that you use. But the key thing which we haven't talked about so far is action. Mm. And you need to go and do the action as well. And that's where I talked about analysis paralysis because people get absorbed with so much information. Pick your two and then do – like you can follow um, their path and learn from their mistakes. I, I'm I'm a big, big advocate of learning from other people's mistakes. Yeah, because they're they're all out there that they've been through some turmoil, they've been through some bad times, they've been through a recession, or uh, I know COVID is very unique, but they've been through recessions before, and they've come out the other end with a strategy, with a with a with a method. So, but you do need to go and action. You need to, if it's real estate, if it's property, go out and do the viewings. If it's a uh, if it's podcasting. Um, buy the equipment that you need. You don't have to spend a lot of money, but buy the right equipment to get you um, to the point where you can start recording. So for me, um, information gathering, assimilation, understanding is really important. But the key bit that a lot of people 
never get to is actually action in it and go out there, start conversations, meet people, network, reach out to your current network um, and tell everyone about your podcast, your property, your coaching, whatever it is, because one of the big problems that people need coaches for is the accountability and, and, and making sure that you are continuing to move forward. I'm, I'm actually quite lucky. I don't procrastinate very much. Um, I don't go so deep into my thoughts and, and never get, get to the actual action part. I'm quite an action orientated person and I'll make the phone call. I'll, I'll, I'll look online. I'll go and do the viewings. And for me, I know a lot of people struggle with that procrastination piece and I'm very empathetic for it. But for me, it's not a massive thing because I'm happy to, to do the action. Even if it's, it's not perfect, I'd prefer to start and get better than this, than get perfect straight away. Yeah. Well, and I think that that, that is the actual point of inflection there, right? where someone is reading the information and listening to the podcast, uh, maybe even buying the equipment off of Amazon or whatever yeah. and, and, and ordering it and, and getting it to the house. That, it, that, that tricks people that tr in, the, in, the, in their brain, tricks people, right? Yeah. Into saying, look, you're doing stuff. This is great. Awesome. But then it's that inflection point where the, now you have to take action. What does that mean? You got to record that podcast. You got to make that phone call asking for, asking an investor to drop a whole bunch of money on your deal. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know? uh, that's, that's the hard part. That's yeah. the hard part. And I think that in the initial part before that inflection point is that our brains will trick us into thinking that we're doing stuff and we're really not. Like we're, we're, we're doing stuff but it's not really the stuff that's going to finally make that thing we actually want to manifest in our lives actually happen, yeah. right? The action, the action that must be taken to realize what you want to see. And that's, that's probably the toughest part for most people, right? Yeah. I, a lot of people, especially in the corporate world are very busy, but they're not being productive. Mm -hmm. They go around and they have meetings and, and they feel like they're doing lots of things and, and actually, they're not being very productive at all. And it's a, it's a frustration that's been through all through my career with these, these bubble of people that look very busy and, and, and are moving around and going to every meeting that they can get their hands on, but actually they're not delivering anything. And you have to do deep work as well as meetings. You need to. Um, so, so for me, um, action is so much more important than, than just making yourself feel uh, that you've reached a, a step of buying the buying the software or buying the the equipment. I was on a course. Uh, I I said to you beforehand. I did a podcast course on Saturday, and one of the ladies that was on it was saying, um, "I just want to get all of my episodes for the first season ready, and 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 I've got. I'll get the equipment and and I'll be looking to do it in." I don't know, something like six months. I went, no, 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 no. You need to find your first recording. Even if you don't publish it, you need to do your first recording in the first month. You can buy stuff on Amazon. It comes the next day. You can spend some time preparing, but you, you need to practice. Just practice first of all. And, and, and I've offered to, for her to share those practices with me and so we can talk around it and talk uh, talk how she could improve or speech or whatever it was that she's struggling with but don't say that you're going to release your first podcast in six months time that's that's so counterintuitive counterproductive of what you really need to do which is put yourself out there and and tell your friends tell you so I, I said to her you need to send your friends your family, your colleagues, your acquaintances, any stranger you meet on the on the street that whatever your thing is, whether it's a podcast, whether it's a property, whether it's coaching, you need to tell people because then then they will ask you, especially friends and family, they will ask genuinely, have you done your first podcast? Have you recorded? And they'll do it from a loving position rather than necessarily a critical position. But it's all about doing and action in and getting things out there and like years ago my first social media post it was on twitter 
and it was one like so i think it was when it was only 140 characters and um and my first post that i did i was like i was nervous this is like god it must be like it must be like six seven eight years ago i really can't remember but uh, twitter was the thing at the time and and it was like and i just hit send and i just went i've just got to get it out there and and that's been something all the way through my life um you do have to put yourself exposed to criticism or trolling or or whatever it is because you again it's the uncomfortable comfortable to to put yourself outside the comfort zone um means that there's growth there's there's you're going to get better you're going to improve um with skills i always say tools tactics techniques with those things around you you can achieve whatever that new thing that you want to, to 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 go deep into there's there's probably many people out there that might say oh phew, it's easy for you to say because you're an action-oriented guy you know i'm not an action-oriented guy i i really am but let's say i am not yeah. right it's there there's there's got to be a way to get an un someone who's not familiar with taking action to to really start like, I guess, holding themselves accountable. I mean, there's one, uh, the five second rule is one Like you know, give yourself five seconds. As soon as you decide you're going to do something, start, start counting backwards to get it done before you hit number one. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> like start working towards it. That's one thing you can do. But I mean, I, I have to imagine that for, for many people out there, if you're action oriented already, it's, it's much easier for guys like us to get things done. But for the ones that aren't, they're more practical in nature, perhaps. I think also more theoretical as well. I got a lot of theoretical people. Um, the one thing I would say was it wasn't something I always like action orientated. I wasn't always like that, and um, I spent time in my twenties where I pretty much wasn't very effective in a career setting at all, um, and. Uh, I, I was given opportunities, but I never took them. I I just was scared. I was um, unsure of myself. I didn't know what I was good at. I didn't know what my values and beliefs were. And it took a period of time with self-development being key to, to what I wanted to achieve, a really good mentor, a really good coach to bring me along as well. And And I've developed that skill that now action is more natural to me all these things are you might be personality wise more triggered to be action orientated i i granted but all these things can be learned and can you can you can build yourself into someone that does action rather than someone who puts everything off but I seem to think that that's probably one of the key skills, whether it's whether you're working in corporate or even if you want to get started in this business, that that, that massive amounts of action is something that you must take if you want to see your dreams actually come true. I mean, uh, there's there's a story, uh, one of my first big deals, I actually, I saw it, I talked to the broker and I signed the, I signed a purchase and sale agreement sight unseen. It didn't have any wow. money raised. I had no lender lined up. I had nothing. I signed a PSA yeah. <laughs> and committed to buying it. And I'm not suggesting people do that, but this is the kind of action oriented guy I am. But then it's like, oh man, now what do I do? So I, I, I kind of forced myself into a situation. Now I have to act, right? Yeah. It's like, yeah. you wanted the deal. You got the deal. You won the deal. Now what are you going to do? Right? So, I mean, that's another option, right? Is it put yourself into a situation where you have to take action to fulfill your dreams. I mean, that's uh, oftentimes people want to try to plan their way into it, uh, which is probably the, the, a better way, a better strategy. But but sometimes that's sometimes you just have to, I guess, drop yourself into a situation where now you have to, you know, fight or flight, right? Yeah, it's a really interesting one because um, I thought about this quite a lot um, recently with my corporate role and transitioning in a way, and. Um, I think if I wasn't married and didn't have kids, 
um, I would be more willing to take higher risks than I am mm. at the moment. Um, so for me, taking calculated risks are incredibly important for me rather than um, a sort of sink and sink or swim uh, scenario. I think if I was if I'd started this course uh, maybe 10 years earlier, um, I might well have taken those sorts of risks. I, I now I, I actually actually think it's a really good way because if you've got to then find a, an investor or a deal or um or because or, or, you've got a deadline to reach, you will make a hundred calls on Monday, on Tuesday, on Wednesday, on Thursday, and on Friday because you've got to get that deal done. Um, so I get your mentality, and I think that's where I would have been if I'd have started this whole shift earlier. Now, with my my um, responsibilities that I have with family, uh, with my immediate family, I don't think I can take those those risks without jeopardizing the stability, um, the financial stability which I bring to to my family. So I think it's a really good idea when you're young and you don't have the responsibilities. I would say when you're nearer to 40, as I am, you you think to yourself, actually, let's do this over a transitioned period of three months, six months, whatever, 12 months, whatever it is. Yeah. To yeah. get that actually everything in place. But you're still actioning, but it's just you take it a little bit slower because you need to have, whether it's a... a, a a, a, a reliable income or whether it's uh, whatever it is to to make your uh, make your family safe and secure so so for me it's I don't take those sorts of gambles now um, it's a lot more calculated so all my risk taking I do risk take but it's all thought through and, and it's it's more calculated risk taking these days yeah well, definitely be calculated in your risk taking but don't get caught up in the analysis paralysis yeah <laughs> Absolutely. That's that's the key. <laughs> yes, absolutely. And also it's a really good exercise to think of the worst case scenario. So if you're if you're uh, your your example of just getting a deal done and you've got what two weeks to get it done, if you're gonna take that chance, you have to think of the worst case scenario. What happens in two weeks if you don't get a deal done? Like what what would happen? I I'm making it up bankruptcy or um, 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 responsibility, liability for that property, for example. So I actually think it's a good exercise. When you're, when you're working out a strategy or a vision of where you want to go with a particular thing, always think of the worst case scenario that is. So, so for example, podcasting. I released my first podcast. I thought to myself, what's the worst, worst thing that can happen? Someone I know, so family, friends, whatever, um, listens to it, and tells me it's useless what the hell are you doing that for example was one that was sort of criticism from someone that I valued their input that was my worst case scenario for releasing my first podcast so um I had to think about it okay if that happens what am I going to say what am I going to do so um that's actually a really good tool um, which isn't often talked about when we talk about mindset, but actually thinking before you you go for it, what's the worst thing that could happen if it all goes wrong? And I think that getting that feedback and then not getting discouraged if the feedback is not exactly as positive or maybe it wasn't delivered in the most uh, effective way. Maybe it was delivered with uh, with a whole lot of salt on it. <laughs> yes, yes, absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> And not get discouraged. I mean, hey, there, there's been times when, when we put out a product and, uh, you know, we, we beta test something and then the audience just did not like it. They hated it, you know, and it's like, OK, that, that caused us to really push forward and come up with something better. Right. So the, the way we look at it is, is, you know what, use that, use whatever feedback that is and do something even better than what you did before. And the thing like. It didn't actually happen to me with someone trusted telling me that I was, wasn't very good as a podcaster. But actually, there's a lot of good in criticism. There's a lot of good in, mm -hmm. in the trolling because you're getting – there usually isn't an, a slither of truth within it, even if it's badly delivered. Um, they are trying to tell you 
if you if they say oh you're useless at podcasting your best answer is why 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 was it useless what what didn't you like about it and if they come up and they say sound quality or uh, production or uh, the music whatever it was that you that is part of it actually it's really useful because if that person heard that then other people are going to hear it and that might hinder your development and your growth anyway so so even if um, criticism from someone who's trusted is badly delivered there usually is a sliver of truth and you do need to think about that as well absolutely absolutely use that criticism to really fuel where you want to go to next exactly. i mean i do a lot of that i do a lot of that you know and I, we we come up with a lot of stuff and some it's not perfect we try to put out in our in our high action group we're mm-hmm. putting out stuff as much as we can and Oftentimes we miss stuff. We miss stuff. You know, we do. Yeah. Um, it's not always perfect, but uh, you know, we're getting better every single time, every single day. We're getting better with what we're doing. So that's that's what we'd like to see. Products, products and services um, is an interesting one because um, you you can. It sounds like in your business, you're willing to go to it to a point with something and beta tester it or 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 market research or user research understand about what that product um is i actually think that's a really healthy good way of approaching a product you don't go all in but actually you get an mvp out uh minimal viable product test it with people and see what their response is um sometimes i'm not going to be critical of the corporate world too much but sometimes corporate world is so slow on how it makes change actually they miss the point of the change and 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 that can be actually quite quite negative and i've worked with some brilliant software developers and and architects um uh software architects who have really been embedded in getting something to a point where it can be tested you do your market research or user research and then you either scrap it because it was no good or you pivot and you actually say well it was meant to be this and now it's gonna be this the whole coca-cola point coca-cola was supposed to be a medicine and then it pivoted into one of the largest global brands um, in beverages, if not in the world. That's right. That's right. I mean, there's, there's so, so much out there, so much opportunity to really take, take whatever you're hearing and grow from it as opposed to let it discourage you. You know, and that thing, that's, that's probably one of the key takeaways is that you, you really, you really have to apply what you're hearing and then take that massive action. That's probably one, one of the biggest things that has helped me anyway. I know it's helped you mm. in, in your line of work and uh, especially with some of the changes you have coming down the pipe here in the next uh, next six months or so. It's, it's one of those things that um, it's, it's only through massive action that you're able to see and manifest a life that you want ultimately is what it is. Yeah. That's what it is. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. So Mark, what, if you had some advice for your 21 year old self, what would you tell them? Start earlier, start in your twenties, run a business, start a business, try it. If you, if you don't like it, there's always going to be a job there somewhere. It doesn't necessarily have to be in a corporate. It could have been in a smaller company, but uh, I wish I'd have started businesses at an earlier age in my twenties. I think a lot of people feel that way. <laughs> <laughs> now I'm just catching up on everyone else. Now. <laughs> right, that's right. That's right. That's right. That's right. That's right. All right. Well, guys, if you want to reach out to Mark, you can reach him through his website at absolutebusinessmindset.com. I hope you can see that even as a corporate employee, you can still have an entrepreneurial mindset that when you, when you activate it can take you towards financial freedom. And of course, by eliminating fear and taking massive action, you can actually manifest the life that you want. Take care of yourself out there, guys, and I'll see you in the next episode. Thank you for listening. We hope you enjoyed the Bulletproof Cashflow Podcast. 